Hello everybody, I am Jared Ross, a genie vlogger, and welcome back to another Professional Genealogist Reacts. On today's video, I will be watching Ancestry DNA Results, Black People with Red Hair, by Life with Dr. Trish Varner. I don't quite know what to expect for this video. Obviously, we're going to be getting Ancestry DNA Results. I'm guessing that it's her daughter who has red hair, uh, based on the photos that I've seen um, in the, the thumbnail. Um, so I think that's going to be the interest because I, I do know that there are black people that have natural red hair. Now, I honestly would not be the person to ask when it comes to, you know, why, why do black people have red hair? Um, I mean, I could make guesses based on my knowledge of things, but I don't truly know. Part of why I'm saying that is because I don't honestly know if there are people where they have fully African ancestry, no European where they do get red hair. I think the obvious thing that a lot of people would expect is that someone who's black who has red hair would also have some sort of European ancestry and that's why they would have the genetic mutation for red hair. But being a redhead myself, I do understand that having red hair is a very complicated thing when it comes to determining it. And I think in my own 23andMe results, they said that they didn't think I was gonna have red hair. I had like a really low, uh, you know, what? what is it, you know, less likely to have red hair sort of reading. And, you know, I'm very obviously a ginger. It's <laughs> quite obvious. So curious what she's going to say uh, throughout this video, whether she's going to go into the actual science about that and, you know, anything like that, like the history of, or not just the science, um, you know, of mutations and all that, but more of like, you know, are there people of fully African ancestry who do have red hair? Is that common in certain areas of Africa or more common in certain areas? Um, or is it something that's really more limited to uh, people who have both African ancestry and European ancestry or um, to be less specific, African ancestry and some sort of like Caucasian ancestry. So not not even necessarily European, but technically what a lot of people would consider more of like Western Asian as well. I'm not really going to say much else, but before we do jump into the video, please be sure to give this a thumbs up. It really does help me out. Also, be sure to subscribe and click that bell for notifications on future videos. But with all of that fun stuff said, let's go ahead and watch the video. Welcome to my mom's channel. Today I'm going to talk Very about cute. But we're here to talk about our red headed stepchild. Stepchild? <laughs> I don't know, no, mama's okay. baby, daddy's babies. I don't know. <laughs> it might be the milkman. We were in the hospital because, you know, I had a C-section. Okay, if y'all know, you know, they cut my belly. But, uh, long story, we won't talk about that here. But anyway, so I wasn't the first one who saw her. Daddy was the first one who saw her, so I'm going to let him tell this story. Yeah, so here's Trish, you know, laid out on the table, all her insides hanging out everywhere because it's C-section, you know stuff around what happened really oh yeah Inside. i gotta be gra i gotta be graphic hey yeah. okay. <laughs> insides are really hanging out yeah it's pretty cool uh -oh. um but anyhow they go cut open and they pull out this lily white baby with red hair now let me explain something you got oh wow about Wow. Your hair. One time, I have to tell this story. So one time we were at the gas station. It was summer or spring. It was hot. We live in Georgia. And anyway, so this lady just comes and the, our window is down. Karis is in her car seat. The lady reaches her hand through the a car window and rubs our child's head. I can't tell you how many times I have had some old lady come up and just start like touching my hair like, oh my God, I love the color or something like that. It happens so often. I don't know if this was like a thing back in the day that it was just people were more comfortable with it. Um, but pretty much every single time it's happened, it's always some old lady. I don't know. I totally, I, I understand that because it's so weird when you're like just doing something all of a sudden, like someone you don't know just starts walking up, like hand out, like trying to grab your hair. And like, it's just like, I don't know. It's so weird. In this video, we're going to introduce you to our little redhead and we're going to allow you to hear her story about 
you know, people coming up to her, how she feels about that, etc. I want to talk about uh, the temper thing, though. Because that... So, lo- so all right, there's a history of redheads on my side of the family. My dad, my uncle, and then a bunch of hey, other cousins. You, Hold on. This child, she has redheads. And you know the, what do you call that? The saying is that redheaded people are have tempers yeah let's just say this one here the, the saying in the house is don't mess with the redhead she has a little temper it could be because she's the youngest i don't know Even- i definitely have a temper i don't know if it comes off in the videos ever i doubt it does but Oh my gosh, you get me driving and people getting in my way or just cutting me off or just driving incorrectly or when people don't use their uh, their signals or even worse, when someone starts to slow down and turn and then puts their signal on in the middle of turning, like what's the point of that? But I, I just get so seething mad and I think there's been a few of my friends and some family have like even made the joke that if I... Uh, ever have a dash cam which i do i should just upload those videos just because they'd be so funny just because i just flip out but i could not put those videos up with my name attached because i do not say some uh, kosher things to, to say the least and my mom said you know out of all the grandchildren she has this one's something else all right so we're going to share our ancestry DNA. Like I said, I first took the test about seven years ago. And if you know anything about ancestry DNA, you know that they let you know that periodically they upgrade or update your result. You could actually say upgrade because in a sense they are, you know, the update is because they have, or they assume to have better data. So in a sense it is an upgrade. So that um, your results could change. And I, my results have changed over the years slightly. And, but I'm going to share with you my latest results and I'll pop it up on the screen while we're talking about it. All right, so the very first thing on my list and I went and All I clicked right. on the DNA story for Trish. How old is this? Okay. The, it, the, it, the results look like they're an older version of results, but I see the video is from March 12th, 2021. So pretty recently to when I'm doing this reaction. And the ethnicity estimate, my first highest percentage is Cameroon, Congo, and Western Bantu peoples, 26%. And then Mali is my second one at 18%. So that 20 was 26 plus 18, mathematician. 44. So right now I'm at 44% <laughs> African. Nigeria is my third highest country at 18%. 44 plus 18. 62. Is that right, y'all? Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's number <laughs> I love how he just has this look of like, yeah, come on, keep going, whatever. All right. I'll do this for you. <laughs> number three. And then, so. But he does look like he's enjoying enough, himself. Uh, <laughs> Guess what we jumped to for my fourth highest country, Scotland. 12%. Yeah. I know, that was a bad. So in the, I know she's going to read it out, but I just want to see real quick. We have 1% Spain, 1% France, uh, 1% England, Northwestern Europe. So that's 3%. And then, so 25%. So a quarter European. That was a bad a- accent, wasn't it? Horrible. Okay. Brutal. Anyway. So Scotland at 12%. Okay, so Scotland, and if you don't know, if you're watching this from another country and you're wondering how do black people in America get mixed with Scottish ancestry and other things, (laughs) well, there's this thing called the slave trade. And back in the day, let's just say, probably unwillingly, um, our... Most of the time. Dipping in the slave shacks. Yeah, I mean, that's that's one way to say it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so they, what it is. they mixed in with that ancestry D. I I mean, that and our African DNA. All right, so number four was Scotland at 12%. My fifth highest country is Ireland at 10%. So now what are we at? Okay, so then my sixth highest country, because I'm just mixed all up in here. 
is Benin. My sixth highest country is Benin and Togo. Togo? Yeah, I think it's Togo. Benin, we really need to learn how to pronounce the countries where we descended from. Okay, Benin and Togo is 9%. Yeah, so now I'm just starting to get mixed in all over the place. So then I have Ivory Coast and Ghana at 2%. Senegal at 1%, England and Northwestern Europe, 1%, Northern Africa, 1%, France, 1%, and Spain, 1%. So I think that equals something like 75% uh, African and 25% European. Yeah. Which is basically the average from uh, what I understand. In my experience, that's usually what it is. Um, from all the TV shows that I've seen, especially fin uh, Finding Your Roots, Faces of America, and Both African American Lives, um, all of those by Henry Louis Gates Jr., it, this is a very, very common thread. And just like they said, uh, the main reason for this is because of the slave trade. Most uh, most people in the U.S. who descend from those who were enslaved often also descend from many of the slave masters or overseers. It's not always the case. There are some cases where, um, you know, the couples were willingly together. Um, you know, it, it, it does happen, but I think that's mostly a rare case. The thing about history is it's much more nuanced than we like to think. And even when you kind of have a general idea of a certain time period, not everybody fits into the um, what's pictured of how life was in that time period. You know, at the same time, for a lot of uh, people who are African-American, trying to identify those ancestors that are European to even get some idea of, you know, was it a willing relationship or was it what most of us think in that this was not a willing relationship in any way. But anyway, let's continue. Yeah, this is at the door. Anyway, get yeah. to the results, man. All right, so. Okay, go. My first one. 26%. All right. Eastern Europe and Russia. Okay. Oh, 26% Eastern Europe and Russia. So a very different reading of European uh, than his wife, so their children are going to have a very big mix of different types of European um, along with their African. And one thing I think may be a possibility with their daughter uh, with red hair, um, especially because she does seem to have many more European looking features, um, that being the red hair and the lighter skin, I think it's very possible that she may end up actually having higher percentages of European than her parents just because of the randomness of recombination. You know, her mother was 25%. Her father is, let's see, 26%. 5% is 31, 34. So th he's about 37%. So there's a possibility that their daughter could technically end up being over 40%. I don't know if she'd end up being over 50%, but we're just talking about possibilities. Um, and this is just because the randomness of recombination. Um, but it's also possible that it, it really is just that she just ended up getting genes that really affected how she looks, but she doesn't necessarily have high amounts of European. Both are possible. Um, DNA is just crazy like that. That's right, y'all. This uh, supposedly... African man, African American. Black, however you want to define me in America. His very top highest country where he received most of his DNA from. Eastern Europe and Russia, specifically Czech Republic, Slovakia, Poland, and Lithuania region. Yeah, so one of those. In Russia. My second one coming in at 22%, which is interesting, is also. Cameroon, Congo, and Western Bantu. Woo! Which was her number one at 20, what? Six. So, thankfully, neither one of us showed up on the list of being we related. We are not related. Yeah, because I can handle yes. this. <laughs> We've been married almost 11 years. We got two biological children. We have a total of six kids between us. Um, yeah. Now... So even though number one was 26, so Cameroon, Congo, and Western Bantu is 22. 
followed by 18% Nigeria. I think I had the same, 18% Nigeria. And then 6% Benin and Togo. Mm -hmm. And then 5% mm -hmm. Ivory Coast and Ghana. Mm -hmm. Then it's 5% Mali, 5% Ireland. Oh, Ireland. so he has Ireland. I had like 10, per, I had 10% Ireland and he has 5% Ireland. And then 4% Baltics. 3% Senegal. Who knows anything about the Baltics? I tried to research that. <laughs> the Baltic states. Um, so Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia. The Baltics, I want to say, is it's part of Europe. It's it is there. part of Europe. I it's over there close to Russia. He's right. Oh, yeah, back to yeah. All right, Gladdy. Go. You know about your people. 3% um, Senegal. 3% mm -hmm. England and Northwestern Europe. 2% uh -huh. Scotland. 1% Wales. So he had 2% Scotland, and I had 12%. Yep. And you have 1% Wales. Mm -hmm. so, so that comes out to what? Oh, is it 59% African, 41% okay. European. So he has a Oh, I got the numbers wrong before. European, but looking at him yeah. here in America, we just label everyone as I black. Labeled yeah, he ended up having, I think, about a similar amount as the Hodge twins had in total European ancestry. So his dad looks white, so I'm not really shocked about... My dad and my uncle, the brothers. They both, both same uh, skin complexion, both with red hair. They both look white and they both have red hair, so... Hmm. Basically cares, in a nutshell. Yeah, but... <laughs> That'd be really interesting to see his family tree and see if he does know um, his most recent ancestor of European ancestry or the most recent ancestor that's fully European. Because if both of his uncles both have a very European complexion and then, you know, he's getting 41%, it's very possible that they have a higher percentage of European and so it could be that it's a fairly recent ancestor um, or there are a couple of more recent ancestors. And until we actually look at the paper trail, build the family tree and do that, that's we're not going to know the story. So we have to do that work to learn the true story. Otherwise, we're just just hypothesizing. All right, let's continue. Just a lighter version of Kier's. So when I got his, he tried to argue with me all the way about how he was going to be blacker than me. <clears throat> That's why he can't dance. Well, another thing that it talks about is like when your ancestors came over to America, you know, where they landed and stuff. I know that my ancestors, most of my family lived in Missouri and then from, they came from like the Tennessee area uh, through Virginia and different things like that. But his mom is from the Bahamas. Yep. So, and, and of course, interesting enough, the ancestry DNA detected that. So what does it say about the islands? Yeah, so the way that it detects it is it's looking at all of his genetic matches and then looking to see what are the places, localities that people list of, you know, their ancestry's birth or where they're from. And when Ancestry sees a whole bunch of matches, especially ones where they're shared matches, so they're matching him and then the other people doing, you know, with the same places listed, then it'll say, okay, we can recognize that it seems that there's a connection to the Bahamas, and then they can list that. And so that's where you usually get the more specific stuff. So even though it's technically the admixtures, it's really using the genetic matches to do that. So the more specific the localities, usually it's because of the genetic matches. And it's basically them doing the genetic genealogy or the basics of genetic genealogy for you. Um, so, you know, it's not always trustworthy, though, when you're looking at these, because as I've discussed in previous videos, when you're related to people, you're usually only related to them in one way, at least in a recent way where you're going to actually match through DNA, um, except for people that come from endogamous populations, which is a whole different thing. Um, but basically, when you are related to someone, you're related in one way, but they have all sorts of ancestry where you're not related to them in those ways. And so sometimes the system may pick up on ancestries that seem to be common among matches, but it's just a random sort of thing that a lot of your matches happen to have that ancestry, but you don't actually have that yourself. You're connected in another way to all of them. So hopefully that makes sense. So it says in the 1640s, uh, 
black uh, blacks arrived to the Bahamas. Um, we would always say that's what that Indian in us. You know, they will always claim Native American. Everybody's yeah. Indian, Everybody's Indian, part Indian, Native yes. American. I've heard it about it in our ancestry too. But the thing about it, if um, my family has Native American, I didn't inherit any of that DNA. Um, yeah. Yeah, and it's very possible to do that. So one thing you'll learn in this process is that even siblings can inherit different parts of the DNA, right? So let's just say I'm 75% African and 25% European. My brother could be 50% African, 25 European, 25 Native American, possibly. Yeah, it, it's usually not that crazy of a difference. Um, usually siblings will be, it'll be similar. So, you know, like she had 12% Scottish, 10% Irish. Maybe her brother got, you know, 14% Scottish, 2% Irish, and then 3% Spanish or something. Or like, you know, usually it's not like really different. Like she didn't get any Native American and then her brother did. But sometimes that does happen where someone will not inherit any DNA and their sibling will do a test and they get like 10% or 12% that the other sibling didn't. So she, she really is spot on with this right here. A little bit, it's probably a little bit exaggerated. Yeah. But anyway, I'm, that just goes to show that siblings can but inherit possibly. a different percentage. So, but with that said, not all of us got Native American in us. Even just because we might got a looser hair curl or whatever. That's your white side. That's the white side. <laughs> okay? That's that European. Uh, all right, y'all. So, hope you enjoyed our take on, you know, where the red hair, hair could have come from. Hey, I've heard the stories, too, that some people have, um, you know, say that, some African countries have red hair as well, and I've done some research on that, and it's very possible as well that we could have carried a gene from an African country, such as okay. I believe there's um, some people in Ghana who have, or some other countries, but anyway, I would have to re do a refresher on that, but there are some African countries with some red-headed people as well. Um, okay. And we also are descendants from countries that have notably or, or famous for red hair, and that is Ireland and then some yeah. Scottish as well. So, hey, we could have gotten the DNA from anywhere. We obviously, our, our DNA, our results show that um, is we carry the trait. I carry the trait. Obviously, my husband carries the trait. And thus, we have a red-headed child. And guess what? She's not a stepchild. And she's not adopted. <laughs> and yeah, she is this man's child. all right well that was a pretty good video uh a lot of cuteness with her daughter um i thought that they had a great interpretation of the dna um i get the feeling that maybe she had done a little bit of research before actually getting the results and she i mean she had a really good understanding she explained a lot of things really well um I think, you know, it is a very interesting concept. I was kind of hoping that they were going, that they were doing their daughter's DNA and then comparing it to them. Um, but then as I think about it now, I don't know if these, if any of the websites actually allow uh, children that young to do their DNA testing. 
Um, but maybe they do. I don't know. People, if you know, comment down below. I've never actually tried to get, you know, young children to test because, you know, I'm always trying to get the older generations to test because that's what helps in genealogy. Um, I do know that there is some sort of a follow up video to this. Uh, this was re uh, recommended to me a couple of times by a few different people. And then I started to get a few people recommending the newer video. Um, so I'll have to watch that one. I think someone said that she starts going into her family tree in that one. So that'll be really, really interesting, especially if she talks about using genetic matches with the family tree, um, with the husband's tree, especially with his, uh, ancestry in the Bahamas. That could be something really interesting to look into, but I think that this would be a really fun, tr both of their trees would be very interesting to look into. Um, I wonder if they've had any other family members DNA test as well, not necessarily their children. While it would be interesting, um, more genealogically wise, it'd be more interesting for me to see their siblings test or even their parents. Great video overall, not really a whole lot to say otherwise. Well, thank you so much for checking out this video. I do hope that you enjoyed. If you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. It really does help me out. As well, if you'd like to get access to my content early or even get access to exclusive content, be sure to become a patron of mine on Patreon. Not only will you get access to all of that fun content, but you'll also be helping support my channel, which really means a lot. You can also click right about here if you'd like to subscribe. It is completely free to do so. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram at Genie Vlogger. I'm the Genie Vlogger. I'll see you in my next video.